Fortune's End will follow him and hit the Darkseer and potentially purge off Ion Shell or, or, uh, or Surge. Stay where you are, Tuska. The maledicting. They actually use Fortune's End to prep for RK and EGM to go to work. Is that enough? If they get at least one more attack in here, he should be dead. And there's the one more attack. It's a malediction. Oh, oh, you get it. It's going to be first blood going the way of the Witch Doctor of RK. Malediction is a real thing. Um, one of the fighting periods of PA. And then obviously try to get level 11 for your coup de grace. S4. They're actually oh, going what? to use it. Fortune's end to get light in position for the skewer back out again. EGM. And there's your damage. He snipes the kill. And the Ember Spirit is down for the count. I read those changes and I was like, Oracle's still going to probably be... I don't think he's OP. They're going he's again. going to be really strong here. There's light. Lose this flame guard. And we go again. S4 going to skewer light back oh, in the no! Femi actually pushed him further away. Bulldog's TP as well. He doesn't have a sprout available. And they don't have... Oh, okay. Yeah, they do. They do now. They actually throw out the damage. Nature's Prophet will find the kill. And they turn one into two. Um, Rod of Atos does combo very well. With, uh, well they're going on Bulldog. This should be a kill if they can get that cold feet to trigger. But the slow is just not enough. And MP, he wants to die for this. Prophet sprouts himself up to try and keep MP away. But the skill will arrive from S4 with a shockwave follow-up. He'll get the kill over on the Ancient Apparition. Arcade is that little bit too late to provide his stun. But now they try and capitalize. They're moving on EGM. Snowball forward, picks up light as well. There's no searing chains of elements, so EGM just backs himself up. They can't kill the support Oracle. Diving now almost to the tier 2 tower. Maybe can't go any further, and the searing chains from light misses. EGM, he starts the channel. The prophecy being in, but light, he's underneath the tower, and Oracle is almost too easy. With S4 arriving too, they skew it down. The Snowball will bring him forward, but there's just not enough life for Febby to get himself away to safety. Oh. So both Ember and Tuska caught so deep. So this time around, it actually reveals the position. Arke is going to die again. The smoke gank, the shards are perfectly blocking Arke again. The paralyzing cast is causing some problems. And with the mount, oh it's four! He gets a four man RP. Skewer's not a bubble. They can actually jump on down. The Ice Mask will connect on S4 as he drags Light back further away. EGM protecting the Magnus as S4 TPs himself away to safety. EGM sacrificing himself for the core. A huge RP, but just no follow through. And this will be some significant damage into the tier 2 tower, and there's the answer to one of our questions. So it is the Rod of Aoi coming in for EGM, but Light, he's gone all the way in. They found Admiral Bulldog oh, no. with the Ice Blast to connect. We're actually going to have the lag in the middle of the fight as well. Thank you very much. Oh, S4. they get a two-man RP on the two carries too, but oh, oh my god, the vacuum! Four-man vacuum wall! Oh, uh, they catch them all. With the Mana Void return, though, the Ember Spirit is going to go down. And Alliance trying to fight underneath their own tier 4 towers. Fareb's going to get popped out by the Oracle. And now, after the fight has ended, we will go back to our normal viewing of uh, 60 frames per second as MVP. So a 3 for 2 trade-off was the end thing. And that is only because Darkseer hits such a huge vacuum wall combination. But MP he's in trouble. still be caught. The Furion's up in 20 seconds. He doesn't have anything to jump to. And now oh, that Rod of Atos. Atos goes to work again. So MP jumps over to EGM, gets oh, two so crits! EGM barely surviving, he's healing himself up as quick as he possibly can and stays out of the vision of MP, but he'll come back over. He's got another fortune's end in two seconds, but it looks like Loda might be able to finish the job. Oracle, in fact, will kill Secure. Well, not EGM. Um, the Phantom Assassin inside the Radiant Jungle, and now he may even five more. Febby out of position, and S4 blinks off cooldown, so he can jump up. He was looking for the blink into Skewer. Not going to get it perfect, because the Shards come seconds. in. They do get the Searing Chains off as they split up the fight. Dubu, he's in a real trouble, as he'll actually go down to the Anti-Mage. They'll keep on going. Another back. There's no wall combo to go with this, this time from Ferev. And the Paralyzing Cask will fly out, locking the Dice here in for a little bit longer. But it's Light who's really locked in. Into the Nature's Prophet Sprout, and then the double kill! It's there for Loda. Prophet managed to catch out the Ember Spirit, but the Mana Void spilled its damage out. So Loda will pick up a double and they'll look to push it even harder. How's your screen looking, Cap? It's looking alright. I'm not I'm not lagging too much. But you're seeing that Lions, Alliance is really good at having the band-aid effect. Like you understand you're behind, you understand you lost. Instantly Loda moves the middle lane, pops his mana style, pushes the lane out. Mm -hmm. Bulldog, TP's to the top lane, pushes that lane out. So MVP, even though they've got this Aegis the Immortal, they can't utilize the first minute to a minute and a half of it because they're trying to repair the damage done to their lane. Yeah, but MVP's lineup, oh, top. With the Scythe of Ice, they might be able to kill Ember Spirit, oh. but... Nope. 
the flame guard just soaks up too much damage from that ultimate. Um, but that's the thing, right? Is Mashing that Bulldog instead. with the pickoff potential that they're going to be able to see with Tusk against Furion, with an Ancient Apparition on top, and then the double Battle Furies, they've got a great lineup with dealing more. with the split push. They've got Arke. Arke's just going to go Scepter and TP out, but the Vank was there to cancel the TP. Oh, that's a casket, though. Yeah, oh. but they don't have any kind of follow up, and there's no way that, that S4 was going to commit. He didn't have RP available. Oda with that Empower Cleave. Uh, the bonus is just so big for the Animage, he could just destroy all of MVP so quickly. And that's really, that's the play right now for Alliance. Oh, goodbye Magnus. Oh, Jesus. MP's just gone ham, he's gone into the base, he's going after Arke, the Ghost Scepter again. Buying him a little bit of space, Forev. There's a full channel right now from EGM, so Forever's locked in position for the moment, and already S4 bought back. They find the Phantom Assassin on the side, but you don't want to commit big abilities for her. She's still got that Aegis to the Immortal. MP did dive in a bit too deep, and Loda did manage to beat out QO in that bottom lane fight. That 1v1. Now they're going to catch MP with a skewer back. That's the bigger one, but EGM! Oh, God! The crit hurts him so hard, they get the Sprout down, so MP has to stay where he is for now. But only for now. They follow up with the Hex from Admiral Baldur. The control is there. The snowball protection, however, is also there. It won't do enough time, however. The Aegis Immortal will still trigger. The RP is up for S4, but what does he want to do? Apart from get hit by the Ice Blast, that's not what he wants to do. It's just what's happened. But it's bottom lane where Loda, after winning that battle up against the Ember Spirit, will have Admiral Bulldog TP in. They're going to go for it, and they've taken out the melee Rex. Admiral Bulldog, the TP out in time. MP actually gets the mini stun from the MKP, cancelling the TP out of Bulldog. He'll go down. The Sprout TP out will not be there in time. Andy Mage does catch out the Tusk guys. He's retreating out, also dropping the gem while he does it. Yeah, but EGM will get it. Take now because the tier threes and the lane, lane of Rax has opened up. Once you've lost that one lane of Rax, though, it's it's just like all the descriptions that people use against Alliance about rats and, and basically cutting down the infrastructure from the inside out, like uh, termites or something. They found light. Can they get the control on him, however? The spirit's moving, but it's just so damn slow, and they're going to find the kill. Again, QO being caught out. 80 seconds on the sideline. Oh, Alliance are just going to try and go for the end game now. They, they can catch an kill. extra hero. Admiral Baldock goes for the Sprout. An Ancient Apparition, you can surge him all you want. They've come through the Sprout, so they're away on that front. But then moving forward, Loda cleans up the Kareet Wave for Rev's Ghost Scepter will protect him. He still doesn't have this Scythe device of his. But we have MP with a double damage rune. Moves forward. Loader does not want to be part of this one. The RP from S4! Followed up by the Death Ward. The damage is big and the damage is good. MVP will lose to Tuscar as well as PA down for the count. For Rev, they use a Sprout to get the vision on him. S4 still a little bit too far away. But remember what they came here for. The bottom lane's already going to push in. They don't need the mid wave to turn off the backdoor regeneration. So the buyback has to come out from the Phantom Assassin. Forever the back wall, catching out four heroes. Loda very quick in the blink, however. So only three really affected. Arke, successful TP out. You're going to have, you know, two heroes bottom and, and three heroes top or something. And that's just going to make you get caught out by the Nature's Prophet. You're starting now, to see the, the effect of the Ember Spirit nerf right now. MVP don't know what's happening instead of Roshan. They've got the Spirit in there, but they don't know when they can jump. So Light, he just makes the play. <laughs> Loader oh. is ready to be there for him. The Slide of Fissurian Chains will go to work. And another Spirit thrown back in again as they jump forward. Witch Doctor! Arcade's down. S4, however, another big double RP. And Animage will cleave through them. MP surviving for the moment, but then they just turn him for the Mana Void, EGM, Light can't even kill off the bloody Oracle support. They just have to keep going here. Another slide of fist, finally Loader, the big spree ended by QO. He gets both Oracle as well as Animage. Huge amounts of money coming the way of MVP, and with Bulldog being isolated, it's a triple kill for QO, and they can take Roshan, which Alliance has already softened up for them. The mid lane, uh, like, the tier 4 towers are currently under siege, but it doesn't matter if they can just grab this Roshan. Alliance is the one team where you think you're pushing for the win, but you're actually not. And it's just like, it's a trap! <laughs> and all of a sudden, Admiral Bulldog is, you know, staring at, at you with an Agnum Scepter. Look, there's not even a creep wave inside that base. Yeah, exactly. And he's, just, and he's doing this. So the announcement comes into MVP's, MVP's ears, like, your range rack is under attack. And they're like, oh, crap. Exactly. Admiral Bulldog <laughs> is the Death Star in the Star Wars scenario. 
He he is the death ray with his Aghanim scepter that is going to ensure that you actually win the game, despite thinking that you're in the superior position. <laughs> That's why this alliance is fully operational! <laughs> How can they be blocking us if they don't know we're coming? <laughs> They're coming again! The trees are actually making their way down. They find the courier on the way through. But he just keeps doing it. And every time, MVP... Like, they don't want to send someone back with this, and they don't have to. The backdoor regeneration is always going to do it. See, we get the announcement, too. The Dyer's Rack is under attack. Oh! <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, Kuro. Uh, that was a Pog Jam phase. I didn't expect that one. I was, like, looking at that relic, and I was going, like, <laughs> I was, like, oh, that, I was, like, I didn't realize Pia had enough for uh, an uh, abyssal, abyssal Blade. And then I'm, like, wait, no, he's got BKP. That means it's Ember Spirits. Oh, God. <laughs> And he'll have to beat himself into the mid in the moment. EGM, they find him. He's up at the Ancients. And oh, there's he's Alliance. Got a oh, oh, he's on the cliff oh, side. You can get on the cliff. Yep, they need to. Well, they have the vision. They've lost the vision. They don't see him up there. He'll just TP out. Actually, force this fight mid and won't trade anything immediately. Bulldog's still going to push out the top lane. Oh, EGM. He got four staff down. Protection is going to be there, however, in light. Be very careful. Even with the Aegis Immortal, maybe when that Ice Blast does arrive, EGM he doesn't even get chilled by it. In fact, it misses every single player from the Alliance. But the Ember Spirit still has more than enough damage to chop up EGM. And he has buyback, so the Oracle can come back into this engagement. Let's, uh, let's they, see. They got to go for the Tier 3s now because Furion is... <laughs> I mean, at least QO, as long as he doesn't get caught, but he, I don't think he can because of the Lincolns. Furion doesn't have an ability S4. to pop it and still hit sight. He got hexed. Forev went to the front lines, and Pimpy instantly gets the crit. Oh, oh it drops so fast from QO's attack. The Death Ward is out, however, but not for long enough. They don't do enough damage to find a kill, so MVP fighting inside the Alliance base under the T4 Towers with the RP from S4. Loader swing it, but can he get the ding? No, he can't. The return damage is there. Another slide of fist. QO is going to town right now. MP setting his lines as well. They keep the Rapier up, but they still haven't taken out the racks. They still don't have the advantage. The bottom lane is pushing in. Loader's on the front lines. I'm waiting for Bulldog just to backdoor this damn thing, but right now he's defending the front lines. They see the spirit. Light. It's QO. He's back to the world. As far as to skewer himself away, Loader lucky not to get perma bashed. The tier 4 towers are still dying. So is the mid racks. Is this the time, Bulldog? Do you have the confidence to the people buy the BTs and come uh, the back? The is now. Yeah, there it is. BTs, it's on the Animate. They're going He's to the in. They're actually going to have a crack at this. Dubu is there. Oh, they're going to put the devil in. They're going crack. straight for the throne. There it is for Loda. He bought the BTs. He's ready to go at MVP. They have to come back to defend. Okay, he's the man that's going to hold him here. MP's coming back, but the Fortress is under attack. MP, who can he crit? Who can he kill? Loda's playing up the BKP. Bulldog and Loda, they've done it. Alliance will take the game. They go 2-0 here in the first series. They went balls to the wall. It was and a they trap, Toby. MVP. It was all a trap. The Empire really won. Oh, it was just a trap, man. Oh, God. MVP, they were so focused on the fact that they're like, we just won this fight. We got some kills. We forced some buybacks. And they were going for a mid lane of racks. And they actually went bottom. They went for the bottom lane of racks instead of going back to their base. I can't believe they fell into the classic alliance trap. This is why, this is why we said this. You think you're pushing for the win, but you're pushing for your loss.